Hello, welcome to Cardinal Science. Today we're looking at the Edexcel IGCSE chemistry specification for 2017. And we're looking at specification points 1.18, understand how elements are arranged in the periodic table in order of atomic number and in groups and periods. 1.19, understand how to deduce the electronic configurations of the first 20 elements from their positions in the periodic table. 1.20, understand how to use electrical conductivity and the acid base character of oxides to classify elements as metals or non-metals. In addition, we'll also be looking at 1.21, identify an element as a metal or a non-metal according to its position on the periodic table. 1.22, understand how the electronic configuration of a main group element is related to its position in the periodic table. 1.23, understand why elements in the same group of the periodic table have similar chemical properties. And 1.24, understand why the noble gases, group zero, do not readily react. Specification point 1.18. How are chemical elements arranged in the periodic table? The main two structures in the periodic table are the periods and the groups. The periods are the horizontal lines along the periodic table. As you can see, there are seven periods. The groups are slightly more complicated in that there are only eight groups counting from left to right group zero or group eight being on the right hand side. This box highlighted in red does not have group numbers and they are the transition metals within this box. As well as being arranged into periods and groups, the elements in the periodic table are also ordered in terms of the number of protons that they have, or otherwise known as the atomic number. As you can see, moving from left to right, starting with hydrogen at the top in the middle, it has one proton, helium has two. Moving down to the second period, we have lithium, which has three, beryllium, which has four, and so on, as you move along to the right in that second period, all the way along to neon, that has 10 protons. For point 1.19, you need to be able to deduce the electronic configurations of the first 20 elements in the periodic table. If you recall from a previous video on atomic structure, every element and every atom of that element has a pin in it. it, has protons, electrons, and neutrons. And we can figure out how many there are of those by using the atomic number at the bottom here and the mass number up here. The atomic number tells us how many protons we have, which is eight. It also tells us how many electrons we therefore have if it's an atom. And we can figure out the number of neutrons by taking away eight from 16, which gives us, of course, eight again. Now for electronic configurations, we're just interested in the number of electrons. So we have eight electrons. Now we need to apply these three rules to figure out the electronic configuration. The first shell can only ever hold two electrons. All subsequent shells at GCSE can hold up to eight. And subsequent shells are only filled when the closer shells are full. So if we have eight electrons, then we can fit two in the first shell, as you can see on the right here, and six in the second shell. That's eight electrons in total. We can also use our knowledge of the structure of the periodic table to help us with electronic configurations. The group number of a certain element tells us the number of electrons in the outer shell, and the period number tells us how many shells there are. Like I said on the previous slide, subsequent shells are only filled when the shells that are closer are full, which means if it has three shells, then it therefore must have two full shells and one partially filled shell, unless it's a noble gas, in which case that will be full as well. So for example, magnesium is in group two, so it has two electrons in the outer shell, and since it has three shells, its inner shell will have two, its second shell will have to have eight, because of course that third shell has got two in it. And like I said, the closer wind shells have to be full before subsequent shells can be filled. Okay, so for specification point 1.19 and 1.22, we need to be able to say, with regard to any element in the periodic table, how its position relates to its electronic configuration. So, if we start with lithium, for example, we can see it here, highlighted in red, it's in group 1, which means it has one electron in the outer shell, and it's in period 2, which means it has two shells. 
Moving on to boron. Boron's in group three, so it's got three shells. It's in period two, so it's got two shells. Now neon. It's in group eight or group zero, depending on how you want to say it. It's in period two, so it's got two shells. And it's got eight electrons in the outer shell, not zero, in case you were wondering. Okay, now with aluminium, aluminium is in group three, so it's got three electrons in the outer shell. And it's in period three, which means it has three shells. You should therefore also be able to write down electronic configurations for each of these. For example, we'll do lithium. Lithium is in period two, so it's got two shells. And it's got one electron in the outer shell. So the first shell must be full, so it must have two in, because it can only hold two. And we know that the outer shell contains one, so we write it like this. And let's just do aluminium as another example. Aluminium has got three electrons in the outer shell, so you could just write three if you like. And it's got two other shells, because it's got three in total. It must have two in the first shell, and the middle shell can hold eight, and therefore it's two, eight, three. Okay, so just a few more examples. And then I'll show you how we draw these. So we just figured out that lithium is two, one. Two electrons in the first shell, one in the outer shell. Now boron has got two shells, three in the outer shell, which therefore means it must have two in the first because that's as many as it can hold, and three in the outer shell, giving us an electronic configuration of two, three. Neon has got two shells and eight in the outer shell, so it's two, eight. And as we saw in the previous slide, aluminium has got three shells, which means it has two in the first, eight in the second, and three in the third, because we know it has three in the outer shell since it's in group three. Now, if you need to draw an atom based on this information, here's what you should do. Count the number of periods and draw that many shells. In this case, I've drawn three shells, so we're talking about a period three element. Fill the outer shell using the information from the group number. If there are any other shells, which there will be in this case, fill them according to the rules that we've already stated. Two in the first and eight in any other shell. So here we go. We put our electrons on the outer shell. So this is aluminium, so it's got three. Then we fill the other shells. Now the middle shell can hold eight and the inner shell can hold two. So we fill those in like that. Notice that the way I've drawn these, I've paired the electrons up. You don't have to do this, but it makes it easier for your markers and it helps you keep track of how many electrons you've put in. For specification point 1.20, you have to be able to classify metals and non-metals based on their electrical conductivity and the acid-base character of their oxide. With regard to electrical conductivity, it's very simple. Metals conduct, non-metals don't. With regard to the acid-base character of their oxide, it's slightly more complicated. Metal oxides are basic. So when you react them with water, you form an alkali. For example, see below, magnesium oxide reacting with hydrogen to form magnesium hydroxide, the alkali, and hydrogen gas. When non-metal oxides react with water, they form acids. For example, carbon dioxide and water makes carbonic acid. For point 1.21, you have to be able to identify metals and non-metals based on their position in the periodic table. This is extremely simple. There's a zigzag line between boron and aluminium going down in, in steps. To the right of those are the non-metals and to the left are the metals. As you can see, most of the elements in the periodic table are metals. If you remember where that line is, you'll never have any problem remembering which one's which. For specification point 1.23, you have to be able to explain why the chemical properties of elements within the same group are similar. Now, the chemical properties are determined by electronic structure. Most importantly, they're determined by the number of electrons in the outer shell and how far away that electron is from the nucleus. Looking at group one, we can see how they have similar structures. Each has two electrons in the first shell and one on the outer shell. Now, of course, moving from lithium to sodium, we've got a, a third shell, and so that one will therefore have eight, and one in the outer shell. And potassium has two in the first, eight in the second, eight in the third, and one in the fourth. The key part of all of this 
is that that one electron in the outer shell is the one that's doing the reacting and therefore they react in similar ways. Moving down the group further, you can see rubidium that would have two in the first, eight in the second, eight in the third, eight in the fourth, and one in the fifth. Because it has one electron in the outer shell, it will react in a similar way to the others. However, as you move down the group in group one, the elements get more reactive. Rubidium, therefore, would be much more reactive than lithium. For specification point 1.24, you need to understand why noble gases don't readily react. Noble gases are those elements that are in group 0 or group 8 in the periodic table. Now, chemical reactions occur because atoms don't tend to have complete outer shells, and they try to achieve stability by gaining a full outer shell. They'll do this by either losing or gaining or sharing electrons. Now, noble gases already have full outer shells, so they have no need to participate in a reaction. So these elements below, lithium and chlorine, are both essentially seeking an electron configuration that would be similar to a noble gas. Now, lithium has one electron in the outer shell, and chlorine has got seven. If lithium were to transfer that one electron over into chlorine, then of course it would have a full outer shell of just two electrons, and chlorine would have a full outer shell with eight. If we were to look at argon here, which is the third element down in group 8 or 0, you can see it's already got 8 electrons in the outer shell. It has no need to react because it doesn't need to lose or gain any electrons. Thank you for watching. This has been Cardinal Science. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe and look out for further videos as we move through the chemistry specification.